Hi, welcome to episode three of the Weekly Wave. I'm Matthew Lyons. And I'm Aaron Johnson. Our guest here today is president of the class of 2021. Mental health advocate. As well as a member of the anti-bullying club, <laughs> Rachel Barrett. How are you doing, Rachel? Good, how are you? Good, doing all thank right. you. I, f- I feel like we always say that, like we're all right. Yeah, you have uh, yet to catch us on a bad day, so. Don't be there. <laughs> Um, anyway, but recently on Monday, we had guest speaker John Morello come in to talk about teenage issues, obviously the drugs, the mental health, um, social status. He really had a, it was, it was a different presentation. Uh, I think Matt can go into detail on um, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, it was very unorthodox. Um, at first, it seemed like a stand-up routine, and um, I'm a huge fan of stand-up. So that was um, pretty fun to see. And then he really opened up about his personal life, and then he incorporated these characters to kind of show different sides of mental health, drug abuse, um, social status. It was very interesting. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, I've never seen anything like it. Um, we've all gone to school with each other for ever now, and we've had a lot of presenters come in and um, – I don't know, it was just, it was so different. We've never seen anything like it, and I think that really spoke to the kids. Yeah, the fact that it was, like, one man show, but he put on a bunch of different right. personalities, it kind of confused me at first. Right. But then once you get into it, it's, like, really inspirational. You see what he's trying to convey, and uh, the fact that he brought his personal life into it about, like, how he was poor and um, uh, just his, the death of his brothers was, it was very truly, like, moving yeah. for me, at least. And um, I thought it was very clever the way he um, tied all these different characters together. It was very, very interesting. Yeah. So, Rachel, what do you think students, or how, I'm sorry, how do you think students should benefit from this presentation? Um, Well, I think just kind of, one thing that I liked about the presentation overall was I felt like it wasn't a lecture. It wasn't someone coming and telling you, don't do drugs, don't bully, um, don't do all these things. And... Instead, he used storytelling and the characters, all the different characters that he had to say it without having to say it. Um, and I feel like that really does speak to students because if they're, if you, you know, you, you go to an assembly one day, you get called down, you get to get out of class, everyone's all excited, and you go and you see this person and they're, they're just telling you not to do things. I mean, what's the one thing we know? Someone's told not to do something, they're going to they're gonna <laughs> yeah, want to do yeah. it. And I feel like when he used um, kind of like stories and examples and really sh- like showed us that you really don't know what other people are going through, I feel like that really did speak to a lot of kids because, I mean, people I've talked to, they have said that they, they've felt like some of the characters um, or have been in um, similar situations to some of the characters that um, he was portraying. And it's just, it was just such a relatable show that I feel like, it really spoke to the kids and got them thinking and just made them more aware um, of how they treat people and everything, yeah. Um, He was talking a lot about mental health and do you believe that schools are doing enough for their kids to help them with these mental health issues? Because it's it's been brought into a spotlight recently with like depression, anxiety, all of those um, about people need are speaking out and they, they're saying we need help and schools are responding. How do you feel? Do you feel schools are responding well enough? Um, I think it depends on the school. Um, obviously, we know no matter what, every single teenager um, is going to have to some extent, some form of depression or anxiety. I mean, with the amount of hormones going around and just like the whole social structure of high school, it's, it's, some of the best but also some of the worst years of your life I mean just so much is going on and all the drama and sometimes it can be such a toxic environment I think it can be a great environment but it can also be extremely toxic I feel here at Abington High School we do have um, I mean we have the anti-bullying club and we have um, wonderful Miss Posk who um, is our school psychologist and I think she does a really great job of connecting with kids and um kind of helping them out in that fact. We have um, great guidance counselors that kids can go to and amazing teachers that um, even if it's not something big, um, I feel like students do feel comfortable enough with um, teachers to confide in them. But I do, some schools unfortunately aren't, we're very fortunate here at Abington High School and I feel like some students at other schools aren't as lucky, lucky to have what we have um, here. 
I feel like the principals, like Miss Luco and Dr. Sullivan, are very aware of it. Mm -hmm. Like that's why we have a school of psychologists. I feel like that's a really neat idea that they implemented in there. Yeah. And they're just they're building on to this kind of help center mm -hmm. where you have somewhere to go to. You have somewhere you can go with like the Nook uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Luco's office. <clears throat> and it's just, I feel like Abington High School is really adapting to the situation in a very like well way. Yes, I agree with that. I do agree with that. Um, mental health, not even just in society nowadays, it's been brought to the forefront. And there's so many, um, like you scroll through Instagram, you see so much stuff about mental health and schools oh, are definitely. schools are really getting it now in their understanding. I mean, you talk to our parents, they're like, depression wasn't a thing when we were kids. Like yeah, Everyone just told you to suck it up. Exactly. Mm. And now um, people are a lot, especially schools are a lot better with dealing with it. Now you mentioned social media. In the past and previous episodes, uh, we've talked about how negative social media can mm -hmm. be. Do you think that social media can help with depression and like raising awareness? Um, yes, I do. Personally, I wrote um, for the Green Wave Gazette. I wrote an article <laughs> last year. Plug. <laughs> yes. Um, it's called Mental Health Matters. It's still up. And it's it talks about um, a specific student that we had last year. She has graduated and is in college now, but um, kind of her struggle with mental health. And she created a blog, actually. Um, it's, was called, it's called Safer Souls. And it's kind of a way for um, kids struggling with mental health that don't really know how to deal with it for them to... Um, kind of like an outreach program, if that makes sense, for them to receive support with awesome. what they're going through. It is awesome. And um, I feel like in that retrospect, yes, but also it's kind of both under the spectrum. Um, I see, I mean, like Aaron agreed with me, you see so much stuff on social media about mental health in America today. Um, but I think at the same time, I mean, we all know like people, a lot of students have like Finstas, like fake Instagrams, and they... Um, some of the stuff that they say bad stuff about people without actually like telling and so I think that as much as it can be great it can also be very very bad that's a very popular opinion everyone believes that there's it's just like a debatable subject whether social media can help or hurt mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times people say oh social media helped me get through because even though a lot of people were being mean to me in my school I had my online friends but yeah. also Cyberbullying is a thing now, and a lot of people talk about being cyberbullied. Mm -hmm. It's just social media, I don't know if it's done us any good or any bad. It's very, <laughs> I guess, Both. just contra <laughs> yeah, controversial. It's, it's a double edged sword because yes. while there is good, there's a lot of bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all right, our, our final question <laughs> we've been on for quite a while. Um, John Morello, the speaker, he gave his presentation and act in an untraditional way. He made like edgy jokes, um, definitely more relatable to the student, I mm -hmm. would say. How do you feel about this different style? Like, it's basically a stand-up act. How do you feel about someone coming to the school and having, like, a stand-up comedy, but also a very inspirational, personal story as a way to teach kids on to do what's right? I think I loved it. Personally, I loved it. I know, speaking to you guys earlier, you guys loved it. And, so ever, I mean, be almost every single person I've talked to has loved it. And we you just don't get that reaction when it's someone who just comes and tells, maybe just tells their story. He told his story, but it was very, like you said, unconventional, unorthodox. And um, I feel like when someone just comes and lectures you and I don't know, it doesn't really speak to students, but this truly did speak to students. Um, the way that he, he magically got to everyone, I mean, I saw so many people going up and shaking his hand at the end and saying, like, thank you so much for coming here. And um, the Anti-Bullying Club, we were so happy that he came. And um, we also, we, we thanked the Coombs Foundation and the PTO for um, providing us with the funds to get him here. But he was just, he was so amazing. And he really did speak to um, so many students. I feel like he spoke to more students than, like, anyone, any other presenter that we've had or anything. Um, like we talk about, he used stand up and also just, he made his whole, everything was relatable. Everyone could relate to it. I mean, there were, I only think I've spoke to, spoken to like two people after that that were kind of still like lost because it was a bit confusing. You know, he switched from character to character um, with his story. But I mean, overall, I think it was amazing. And we've already just in the past few days, we've 
decided that we want to bring him back in the future. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And we're back for a segment I like to call AJ's A-List. It was recently just Super Bowl Sunday in what a lot of people would like to call boring and a disappointment with the lowest scoring Super Bowl ever. 13-3, to Patriots won. I mean, like, obviously, what were we expecting? Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting much, especially after last year's loss. This, uh, this was a very important Super Bowl for us. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot about last year's loss. Like, yeah. we, we started off the season bad, but we really um, went into a, like a very good season. Anyway, on to the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, it was a, a huge defensive battle. Mm-hmm. It, the scoring mostly happened in the fourth quarter. The first three quarters were just punt after punt after punt after punt. And it was, uh, it was just, it was boring. Yeah. Um, Super Bowl halftime show, it, it gets worse and worse every year, folks. Um, Maroon 5, yeah. they, they were all right. Yeah. Travis Scott without auto-tune sounded terrible. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it lacked the spectacle that a Super Bowl halftime show should have. I don't know if it was two years ago, three years ago, Katy Perry on a flying, flaming horse or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, Lady Gaga was jumping off of, like, buildings and catching footballs and stuff. That was, yeah, it was cool. There was dancing. There was other stuff. Adam football. Levine taking his shirt off was a real letdown. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, at the end, Greg's are in line. There was five seconds left. I don't know what people were. I don't know what the Rams were expecting, but it was a very awe moment when this guy who's been basically perfect in the postseason mm-hmm. with field goals, kicking 50 yarders, like upper fi- like 57 yarders in the postseason, misses a 47 yard field goal and crushes all hope. I mean, five seconds left, all hope is crushed anyway. Yeah. Like the Rams were expecting to make the, this field goal, get an onside kick, and convert on that hail mary. Like it, it just was impossible standards mo- most likely. Um, yeah, but parade was fun. Uh, <laughs> huge amounts of Patriot supporters came up to Boston yesterday to really root on the team and put, like, I don't know, like a sweet end to an amazing season for the Patriots. And now to turn over to the weekend box office. Did you get that football reference? I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, well, it wasn't very good. It, it, yeah, it, Whatever. I'm sorry. Go to the box office. Okay. Uh, first place is, once again, Glass, grossing over $9.5 million. Then is The Upside with $8.6 million. Then is Miss Bala with $6.8 million. Uh, then is Aquaman with $4.8 million. Still in the box office. It's even still it came in there. out in, like, December. It might have came out in January. No, it, it definitely came out, like, mid-December. Whatever. Okay, anyway, um, <laughs> and last but not least is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which grossed $4.5 million. And now it's time for a new segment called Movie Time with Matt, where I recommend one movie that the audience should watch. I don't know this movie, folks. I'm, I'm clearly at a, at a loop, so. Yeah, it is completely a surprise. So this week's movie is... Can we get a drum roll, please? Uh, it's going to be really loud, but... It's all right. All right. Just, okay. The Departed. The Departed is directed by Martin Scorsese and stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, Mark Wahlberg, Alec Baldwin, and more. This movie is phenomenal. It has great acting, great writing, great cinematography, and it is well worth a second watch. This movie is. What is The Departed about? Well, that's a great question. (laughs) The Departed is about a police officer that goes undercover. Into to infiltrate a crime boss, okay. A crime boss's operation, and um, I don't think I should say anything more. But it is a phenomenal movie. What do you think? More information would like ruin the story, or yes, it would. Yeah. No, I kind of want to see it. It also stars Jack <laughs> Nicholson, and he is he's Jack Nicholson. He's always great, but uh, yeah, he is phenomenal. This movie is just all around awesome, and I cannot recommend it more. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week to see an all-new episode of The Weekly Wave with special guest Mr. Peter Schaefer. And make sure to follow us on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And also, special thanks to Allison Sanisuazo for making our show so great all the time. And another shout-out to my brother, Michael. Happy Happy birthday, birthday, Michael. Michael.